Hello and welcome back. As I'm going along, I'm doing this rather technical drawing here of where all the wires and what they actually are connect to the breakout board. Because without it, I would be truly lost. Just about to mastic the stab out of trim LEDs so we get no light bleed. I've used coloured wires for all the electrical components to identify what they are, all the way to the breakout board, and then just standard white wire. It could have been any colour, but white is the only colour I haven't used in the side. From the breakout board to the Arduino interface. So that's now hardwired, but all the electrical components can now be disconnected if I need to update anything. There's still be a lot of P-clips. P-clips? There'll still be a lot of tie wraps to undo if that is the case. However, the most I can foresee is just changing the odd LED if it blows, which can be done quite easily in situ. So the idea is now is to flip this back over the right way and wire this rather large, it will be 52 wires, to the Arduino. Perhaps not tonight though, because I'm feeling a bit tired. That was a long old slog. And looking down, I can see the EFIS cable loom. That's going to be a nightmare. And what's going to be an even bigger nightmare is the MCP cable loom. Whew, that is a lot to do still. Now that the unit is flipped over, the breakout board is down here. The fixed wiring loom runs across the top of the MIP through the maintenance hole in the top. And then this big loom needs to get wired into the first Arduino and the second. The third will be for the MCP as well as the fourth. And then we'll have two more Arduinos here for each of the EFIS units. So the first job is to strip all these wires down so I get a continuity test. How exciting, eh? This also leaves 104 little bits of wire all over my floor. I'm gonna take one cable at a time. Continuity check to see where it goes. I'll use my crock clip on this one. Buzz the connections and see what it which one it goes to. No way. Right at the end. Typical. We now have the first Arduino fully interfaced with the breakout board down here. Just four more to go. Well, I was going to call it a night when I had a shower, but yet here I am trying to finish it off. It's getting really late now, but perhaps if I get these wires in and perhaps I wouldn't mind hooking these up to the uh, hooking these up to the breakout board, just a little bit closer. Good morning. It's Saturday here, it's early morning, as you can tell how dark it is outside. However, it's the weekend, so I should get this lot finished. Hopefully, anyway.
going to populate the breakout board with the connectors and then hook the wires up. That's the wiring loom now, all routed correctly, ready to go to which interface board is required. I've had to break out another roll, that's a 100 metre roll. I'm on my fourth one now, so that's 400 metres worth of wiring that I've had to put in to this MIP unit. Of course, there's a lot of offcuts that come off the end. However, this stuff. It's the cheap, nasty stuff from China. And I've got a mix of the two. I still get the standard 24 gauge wire. However, sometimes, depending on which bar you get it from, you either get the, the three strand version or the 10 strand version, which is obviously much better, but it's a mix of the two. And that's why clamping it down and not moving it once it's installed is so important. A few tweaks on a, a free strand cable and it breaks instantly. However, they're all the same, same price, same specifications. It's just that some have more wires in and some don't. So what you gotta live with when you go cheap. Still, onwards and upwards, eh? That's three boards down, one to go. And that's the remainder of the MCP and the fist panel. Slow and steady does it. I wanna say onwards and upwards, if I've been saying that way too much. This is definitely taking a lot longer than I expected. So what we do is we stop, we run so it loads the new values in, uh, come out of the configuration page, because I think we think that's all correct. And we are on VR, it reckons. VR. We are. WT. V reference. Are we going to see bug? We are. Bug set. Boom. Game set match. The first thing you may notice is I now have five screens. Two for the captain, one for the upper ECAS, and two for the first officer. That's something I've never had before, and it's just amazing to see them all working. The background lighting, as you can see, I'm adjusting. That'll highlight the MIP. Then we've got the AFDS lighting. It goes right up, which makes it really clear for me, but I can see it blooming out too much on the camera. AFDS, three yellow on this side, down, two red, one yellow. All, all working. Lights test, all working. Screen selection, should see some units flip over now. Change that one, and of course the same happens on the first officer side. Back to normal. We've obviously got a uh, 
IRS alignment problem on the first officer side. So let me just have a quick look at the CDU. Look at failures, IRS alignment. So if I put delete into the CDU, and there we go, it's up and working. I've done my first clock as well, that's up and working. It's now 19, 15 hours, and it's been running for 58 minutes. And of course, we've got the background lights on.